I am a Muslim from the Sulu Archipelago. I'm from the Tausug indigenous tribe, born to a father whose father was a headman of a fishing village. To get to my, my village today, one would have to take a 27 hour flight from here to Manila and another day of land and sea travel. The Tausug, a word that means people of the current, are known for their domination of the South Seas. They had established an Islamic sultanate and launched piratical raids against Spanish colonial settlements for 500 years, well up until the United States crea uh, created the Philippine Commonwealth in 1935. My mother comes from a wealthy Catholic uh, Filipino family that is also part Spanish, but fought against Spanish colonization. If you're familiar with the history of the Philippines, having parents coming from both the North and the South is almost a guarantee uh, for a life of contradiction. For generations, Filipinos from the North, like my mother, read from history books that described the Moros, Muslims from the Southern Philippines, like my father, as savages with tails like monkeys. But actually, my childhood was full of great stories, like my great-grandfather, Panglima Hassan, who led some 4,000 Moro warriors in an attack on the American fort on the island of Sulu. In 1972, civil war broke out between the North and the South. Because of this war, my sister and I rarely attended school until we migrated to California in 1979. My father had been applying for jobs as a busboy, as a messenger, a doorman, prior to, prepare, prior to our arrival in San Francisco. He told my mother stories of being denied service at restaurants and being called chink or gook. My father came from a family with a long history of resistance against colonial forces. But in a San Francisco of 1979, my father was a brown man with slanted eyes who fiend knowing karate moves on the sidewalks of San Francisco to protect himself. I'm eternally grateful that my parents brought me here to this moment. Language has been symbolic for me. My sister and I were two of three people of color in our elementary school in Sunnyvale, California, now called the Silicon Valley. It was rough. I learned to speak English by sitting next to our stereo speaker every day. After school, listening to 92.3 KSJO, <laughs> a hard rock radio station. And this was inspired by the first time I wanted to make friends. I approached a girl, she uh, was an English speaker, and um, I asked her in a Filipino accent, will you be my friend? And she turned around and gave me the middle finger. <laughs> so so I, um, that motivated me. I said, I really need to learn some language of communication. So every day from that day, I sat in front of a radio station and listened to the DJ. And for a long while, as a third grader, I spoke English like a DJ. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Fast forward, I now speak four languages. <laughs> My tribal language, which I, I disregarded because I really felt like there, it's not a language. But I learned later that no, this is, I'm, I'm proud of this. And one being Persian. I lived in Iran for about 18 months and I did my dissertation field work there. I have three graduate degrees from two Ivy League institutions. TC being one of them. <laughs> the first from my village, the first in my family. But I want, what I want to share here tonight is about another language that I have yet to figure out, the language of privilege and power. I am perpetually uneasy, uneasy between my parents' struggle for bringing us here and my supposed task of finding some meaning in my life or making meaning out of freedom as a first generation. As the years pass, I become more and more weary of the possibility that perhaps this idea of self-actualization that is supposed to be on me, my responsibility, as the universalized norm 
that I'm supposed to aspire for comes from the same ideology that justified the colonization of so-called lesser peoples like mine. That somehow those who are not interested in finding the meaning in their lives are lesser than me and must be shown the light. I am vexed in ways more than my parents ever were. As a first generation college graduate, I'm today occupied with questions more than before. Most often finding insightful answers from my students here at Teachers College. 